Hey everybody, DJ Lee here, and uh, I'd like to give you just a quick look at the Denon MC6000 Mark II mixer. It's a new acquisition that I have, that I've recently added to my inventory. And um, a couple of things to keep in mind as a way of disclaimer. This is a four-foot table that I often carry with me because as a mobile DJ, I'm often stuck in little tight places, and so having a four-foot table handing is a, is a real... It's a real good idea. Obviously, if you can get a six-foot table, eight-foot table, that's always better. Uh, what I have here is an example of a setup that I might use if I was at an event where not only was I going to be the DJ, but I was also going to provide um, audio support for performers. Maybe they're going to hand me some CDs to play while they do their performance, or maybe even a thumb drive. So rather than plugging something into my laptop, which I prefer not to do, I have the NDX400 CDJ, which is an awesome piece of equipment. It's really inexpensive, but it's built like a tank, and it plays CDJ, CDRs, and also, as you can see here, it'll even play thumb drives um, with full visual support. So I have that tied into my line two of my mixer portion of the Denon MC6000 Mark II. So that allows me to just kind of swip a, flip a switch and go from my four deck mode on my software, if I'm using that, and just go right into controlling the CDJ. On my line one, I always keep an iPod hooked up. I'll use that during setup to play music or breakdown to play music, or if for some reason I have a problem with the laptop. I can actually shut the laptop down completely and uh, reboot everything and still have music going through the mixer portion of the unit. One thing that was mentioned in some of the reviews in terms of the functionality of the uh, 6000 Mark II was the look of the jog wheels, that they had changed that a little bit, they made them that glossy, smooth touch. I'm not sure why people were upset, but all I can say is it feels nice, it looks nice, it looks classy. It's well built, just like the MC6001. There aren't a whole lot of changes on this unit, from what I understand. I didn't own the 6001, but you know there are a few things. Obviously, it's compatible with uh, other software that the one wasn't. I think the transport section here, there's a few different knobs, um, which I'm not exactly 100% familiar with yet, but getting used to it. But it's a solid unit. It's attractive looking. And best of all for me is that it is small and compact. The coffin that you see here is actually the coffin that I was using for my Denon MC3000, which I still have and still will use as my backup and also as my home unit. All I had to do was remove a few pieces of foam, put in some fillers off to the side here, and I'm good to go. Now, it's a full-fledged MIDI controller and mixer, so I don't really need to use an external mixer, but because I'm a Bose DJ, I do have the Bose T1 that I use as an external mixing board, and the main reason is to give me some additional mic inputs. Um, of course, the MC6000 Mark II comes with two mic inputs, so you know that answers a lot of issues that I had with some of the other models. But I still like the interface, so I use it, and uh, it's a nice little, uh, they work together very nicely as a team. Anyway, there's a quick look at how I use the Denon MC6000 in terms of my setup. That's it for me, DJ Professor Lee. Have a good one.